Hello and welcome to the R Companion for lecture number 14, which is the analysis of covariance and CoVa. And as mentioned in the lecture, ANCOVA serves as the bridge between analysis of variance, ANOVA, and regression, uh, linear modeling. In fact, it shows that there really is no difference between the two other than the independent variable. So let's go ahead and get started. And let me go ahead and make this bigger. So I'll go into GUI preferences. That pops up this. I'll make the size 16. Now, new script. Let's go ahead and tile those. OK, before we get started, we're going to have to load two packages. The first one is the car package. We've all got the car package. It's an old one. We've used a lot. We're going to use it today for the ANOVA function, the capital A ANOVA function. The second library we're going to load is the LS means library, or I'm sorry, the LS means package. LS means allows us to easily calculate, as opposed to doing it by hand, easily calculate the least squares means. Um, this does not come with R. You have to um, go into packages and install packages and look for LS means. It's very handy for calculating those least squares means. So got them both in there. So let's use, uh, let's follow along with example 11.3. And this is on page 592. Notice the data table is on 593. Data table has four variables, pre, post, IQ, and class. According to example 11.3, we're only going to use three of those. Post is going to be our dependent variable. So I'll go ahead and uh, uh, input the post variable. And not surprisingly, I already typed this out. Um, the class variable is going to be our categorical independent variable. And then the numeric independent variable is going to be pre. And notice a couple things here. First, we now have an independent variable that's numeric. We haven't been able to deal with independent variables that are numeric until we got to ANCOVA. Second thing is notice how I have the class defined. I have the numbers 1, 2, and 3 in quotation marks. So by default, by default R is going to see that 1, 2, and 3 as strings or as factors, um, which is a fast way of, of forcing R to see these as categorical variables. Uh, if I typed it in like this, without the quotation marks, then R would see these as numeric, uh, see class as a numeric variable, and would treat it incorrectly. Now, of course, I could also do this to fix that default treatment. They'll all get us to the same position. And again, we need, we really should double check that we got the numbers in there correctly. We'll pretend we do. So let's start modeling. And since it's ANCOVA, the function we're going to use is AOV. <laughs> that function's gotten a lot of use in this course. Um, the dependent variable was post. The categorical independent variable was class and the numeric independent variable was pre. I could have put it in in a different order. In fact, let me go ahead and do that. We'll call that mod 2. So mod 1 has it as class and then pre, and mod 2 has it as pre, then class. So hopefully there's no difference between these two models. Um, why the plus? Um, we're doing the plus because that's what the book is doing. We're trying to replicate the results of example 11.3. We would use a plus if we believed that the effect of the pretest score on the post-test score, the effect, was the same across the three classes. And again, remember, effect is the same as slope. If we thought that the effect differed across the three classes, we'd replace these pluses with timeses. But if we think that the slopes are the same, only differing in the y-intercept, we'd use pluses. So let's go ahead and do a summary of mod 1. 
And while we're at it, we'll do a summary of mod 2. And here they are. And oh, wow, the numbers are different. Hmm. I wonder why these numbers are different. You knew there was something coming up because of me doing this. So notice the sums of squares for class, when class comes first, is 115.6. But the sums of squares for class when it comes second is 228.7. And sums of squares for pre, when it comes second, is 493.4. But when it comes first, it's 380.3. What's going on here? So here's where you get that notebook out and you put a big star. These sums of squares are called type 1 sums of squares. Or sequential sums of squares. So this class, this 115.6, is the sums of squares ascribed to class by itself. And the 493.4 is the sums of squares ascribed to pre when you have taken into consideration class. Again, let me repeat that. The 115.6 is the sums of squares for class when you take into consideration nothing else because there's nothing before class in this model. And the 493.4 is the sums of squares is associated with pre when you take into consideration class. It's called sequential because the sequence matters. Here, the sums of squares for pre in this second model is 380.3, which is the sums of squares of pre associated with pre given nothing else, because nothing else in this model came before pre. And the 228.7 is the sum of squares associated with class given the effect of pre, or when you've already taken into consideration the effect of pre. So the sequences are diff different, so therefore the sequential sums of squares are different. These are the type 1 sums of squares. Notice that the residuals are the same in both cases. Sum of squared residuals are the same in both cases because the top, it's the sums of squares associated to what's left over when you take into consideration both pre and class. And here is the sums of squares left over when you take into consideration both pre and class. So it's the same thing because you're, you're conditioning on the same variables. S type 3 sums of squares tend to be much more useful. Um, to get the type 3 sums of squares in R, you'll use the ANOVA function. And that's a capital A ANOVA. There's a lower lowercase a ANOVA that does something different. So, but this is the uppercase a ANOVA. It takes the mod, and then you have to specify what type of sums of squares you want. And type 3. So notice that the pre sums of squares for pre in our first model, which is the sums of squares associated with pre when you take care of everything else, is the same as the type 3 sums of squares for pre. And the type 1 sums of squares for class, when you take into consideration everything else, that is the pre variable, is the type 3 sums of squares for class. Because the interpretation here, this 228.71, is these are the sums of squares associated with class when everything else is taken into consideration. These are the sums of squares associated with pre when everything else is taken into consideration. These are the sums of squares associated with residuals when everything else is taken into consideration, etc., etc. Just to show you that order does not matter. And to show you that we could do type equal to the number 3, or we can do type equal to quotation mark I, I, I. These two ANOVA tables are exactly the same, except in the order of the rows. The class p value is 0 0.01255. The class p value is 0 0.01225. So that's the difference between type 1 and type 3 sums of squares. It hasn't been an issue until now. So beware, type 3 is better than type 1. OK, so let's clear the stuff on the left. 
Let's go ahead and look at that type 3 semi squares output and let's compare it to the table, table 11.1, .1, page 594. So, middle of the table, class. Okay, there's class. Degrees of freedom is 2. Degrees of freedom is 2. Type 3 sums of squares is 228.71, 228.71. F value is 4.77, F value is 4.77. P value is 0 0.0125, 0 0.0125. Cool. The source pre in the table, 1 degree of freedom, pre, 1 degree of freedom. Type 3 sums of squares is 493.39. F value is 20.57. P value is less than 0 0.0001. So we've just replicated the middle part of that table. And we already know how to take care of the top of the table. Now, parameter pre. We now have to estimate the effect, that one, two, that third part of the table that says parameter and then pre. That's the eff estimated effect of the pretest score on the post-test score when taking into consideration the class that you're in. So this is the slope. And there's a lot of ways of doing it. I think the easiest way is just run summary.lm, lm for linear model of mod 1. And we ignore the class stuff, and we'll go straight to the pre. And the effect of the pretest score on the post-test score is 0 0.7732. The t-test value of the t-statistic is 4.36. I mean, sorry, 4.536. P-value is much less than alpha. Therefore, we conclude that the, uh, S, that the effect of pretest scores on post-test scores is not zero because the null hypothesis is that the effect is zero. We've rejected that, so it's not zero. And then we've got the standard error of 0 0.17047. So this row has meaning. These rows do not, at least in the context of this problem. And so the bottom of table 11.7, got to calculate the least squares means. Here's where we're going to use the library ls means, and the function in there that we're going to use is ls means. We have to give it some information. The first bit of information we have to give it is the model, and the second is the categorical variable that we're going to find the means over. And it's class. So for class one, the least squares mean is 17.29. Standard error of that estimate is 1.07. There's our bounds, upper and lower confidence limit. For class two, the least squares mean is 16.333. For class 3, it's 21.34. These numbers, these LS means, are the estimated average given the pretest score is 0. So these are the intercepts. So this is the base improvement of pre over post. Or that's another way of looking at it. It's a base improvement of pre over post. So according to this, in this sample, class 3 improved the most between pre and post class, uh, pre and post test, and class 2 improved the worst, the least. Notice there is no overlap between class 2 and class 3. So we do know that 3 did significantly better than class 2 in terms of improvement between pretest and post test. And there's lots of overlap between 1 and 2 and 1 and 3, so we can't distinguish between those improvement levels. And the last thing I want to do is, um, is uh, plot this. This is an R ex extra. It's always useful to plot your data or plot your model, plot your results, because those plots have to tell a story of the data. And this will be a basic plot. We'll, we're going to plot 
Let's see, what are the variables we're plotting? I mean, we've got three variables, um, but we've only got two dimensions. So the first thing we're going to do is just do uh, pre and post, just a base of pre versus post. So this is somebody's test. Their pre-score looked like to be about 11. Their post-score was about 29. Now we can color these. And I'm going to change the dot uh, plotting character. So let's go to 20. Uh, that colors in the dots. And we can do a color statement, which is col. And it's as numeric of class. And we had to specify as numeric because class is a factor at this point. We have to turn it back into a number. So the blacks are ones, the reds are twos, the greens are three. So far so good. Now it would be nice to put lines on here to indicate the effect of pre on post for each of the three classes. And it's not going to be too, at, at one level, it's not going to be too easy. Um, I'm going to close that for now. Doing this by hand, we're going to use the results of this summary.lm. So it's going to be a b line. Whoa. And I seem to recall a is the intercept. So that's going to be 10.3722. And B is the slope, 0 0.7732. Oops. And color is 1. And I got this error because I already closed out the plot. So I need to run those two together. So there's the effect of pre on post for class 1. And we can do the same thing for pre on post for class 2. Oops, that's a minus, 0 0.9565. And slope is going to be the same. Now let me point a few things here. There we go. Now we figured out why the intercept was 10.322 for class 1. I mean, recall back to the difference between the effect model and the means model. And this is going to be the effect model. So the estimate for the base class is 10.3722. And the base class here is class 1. Now do we know why the intercept for class 2 is this? Because this is the effect of class 2 over and above that of class 1. So the intercept is going to be just the original intercept for class 1 plus this estimate. Now the second question is, why are the slopes the same? The slopes are the same because this is an additive model. And let's go ahead and finish this up. For 3, we're going to add 4.0585. And we'll have a different color, color 3. Again, the slope is going to be the same because it's an additive model. And there we go. The lines are parallel because this is an additive model. The effects of pre on post are the same between the three classes. The effect, remember, the effect is the slope. However, different classes improved at different amounts. That's the y-intercept. With three, the green line improving the best. And that's it. So here's some of the big things we did here. And I think the most important thing is we talked about the difference between type 1, which we get from just the summary, and type 3 sums of squares. And this is, I believe, the only the first time that the two sums of squares have been different. The second thing is we introduced the LS means function. Saves a lot of calculations on our part. And then we did the plotting just to get a look at the data and the story that it tells us. And that's it. So thank you very much.
This was lecture 14, the R companions lecture 14, analysis of covariance. Take care.